Okay. Um, so what is meta raster format? Uh, it's a new geospatial file format for uh, gridded data sets like satellite imagery. Uh, it tiles the imagery very similar to cloud optimized geotiffs. It emphasizes overviews and pyramids, but where it diverges with cloud optimized geotiffs is that instead of trying to put everything into to one file, it, com it, it separates uh, the metadata, the actual data, and then an index to that data into three separate files. So um, why meta raster format? Uh, I was not involved at all with the creation of the MRF format. Um, so I, I can only speak to what I've gathered from reviewing the documentation on GitHub. Um, but it was originally created by uh, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory uh, for their global large scale imagery services. Uh, and it was uh, intended uh, and really designed to use uh, specifically with GDAO. Um, and it was sort of optimized for quick tile generation and quickly reading data. So uh, just to circle back, three different types of files, metadata, tile index, and tile data. Um, so I'll go over this file to start. Um, the uh, .mrf file, it could be called .xml. Um, it's the metadata for the um, data set and uh, it's in XML. I, um, I'm estimating or I'm guessing that it's because it works with GDAL and uh, GDAL um, is friendly to XML. Um, and so there's some information here and I'll, I'll touch on some of it. Um, the raster uh, tag um, mentions size. And so for X, that's going to be how wide your area is in pixels at the sort of highest resolution. Y is going to be how tall your file is or your, your, uh, your, your area that you're looking at that's covered by your MRF. In C, I, honestly, I don't know why it's called C. I've interpreted that as uh, like the number of bands. Um, page size is saying, how do we break down this, um, data? Um, and the 512 by 512 will be familiar to people who, um, deal with, uh, web map tiles or, or geotiff tiles. Um, that's just how many pixels the tiles are, um, so it's 512 by 512. Uh, the C equals one. Again, it's kind of referring to bands. So it's saying for each pick, uh, for each tile, or you could call it like a page for each page. Um, the it, it it's only covers one band at a time. So for one area that a tile covers at one zoom level. There's going to be actually four tiles, one for uh, red, one for green, one for blue, one for alpha. Uh, the compression, um, it's sort of self-explanatory, but it's using um, the lurk compression. Uh, the R sets, that's where it gets really interesting and I'll go over that in a second. Uh, but let's just move on to geotags. Again, this would be familiar to people uh, coming from the cloud optimized geotiff in geotiff, um, land, uh, the bounding box is the extent of the data set projection. Uh, that's well-known text projection, um, which, um, very familiar, 
popular format uh, for defining a coordinate reference system. Uh, and then the options, those are just um, options that are passed to the, the compression and uh, they're not something you would necessarily see on, on every MRF format, but because we're using LERC compression, there's some specific to LERC uh, compression formats, uh, options. Um, so the R sets, that's where it's get inter it gets interesting. And it was honestly, it was like very difficult for me to figure this out. <laughs> um, it, uh, it took me a while. So, uh, we're going to sort of look at some of this, um, this code here and, and give an example of what it what that R sets means. So I use the XML utils library. It's a super lightweight basic XML parsing library. Um, I created that as well, full disclosure. And uh, I've used that to, to parse the XML file. So we're going to look at um, what this file looks like. So once we've parsed it, we can get a lot more information out. The XML file is um, sort of trying to be small and not uh, be like overly large. Uh, whereas for sort of just once we've read the file, it, it's a little easier to work with it if we uh, kind of decompress the information, um, even though it increases the size of things. Uh, so the, the R sets, which we looked at earlier here, is R sets model equals uniform scale two. What that's saying is that for each different, um, it's, it's almost like a zoom level, but like each zoom level, we're going to um, reduce the resolution uh, in half, we're basically cutting the resolution in half. So if we need 16 tiles to cover an area, we're going to need eight tiles for the next zoom level up. It's not the same zoom level as you might see like in a web map, um, but it's sort of the overview level. Uh, and so We'll see that in this first uh, um, overview level, we uh, have it's uh, three hundred um, seventy nine four pixels by three thousand three hundred nineteen pixels. But then, as we zoom higher up in in lower our resolution. Uh, the height um, decreases because we're not having as many tiles. Uh, we're using um, the tiles start covering a larger area. And so you can also see the scale and that's saying that the resolution is um, about, it's the resolution is 15 times as bad uh, at the, the highest overview level. Uh, and we really, at the highest overview level, we just have one tile that covers uh, the whole area. Okay. So I'm going to circle back again because it's worth repeating. Three different types of files, the MRF, the IDX, and then your data file that varies in the extension name. Uh, so we went over the metadata file. Uh, before we get into the index file, it makes sense to review what the data file looks like. And the data file is the one that's going to be uh, really large. So here's a example data file uh, that's just in ones and zeros. Um, and each tile is represented by a highlight of the color. Uh, so we might have like one tile in the beginning, uh, and then the darker red, and then, then the other red is another tile. So, um, 
just a quick thing, like what do I mean by tile? Uh, so all those ones and zeros, uh, what they um, what they actually mean is what I'm going to show you in a second. Excuse me. Um, all right. So this um, area here, that's like a tile. Um, we can, uh, the tiles actually, the most authentic way to represent it is as a grayscale image. So this would be one tile. Uh, and then uh, the tile uh, next to it would be here. Um, so that's what we're talking about. But the it's this image is actually represented by these ones and zeros. That's where it comes from. Uh, and so the two most important things about this data file are the offset and the length. And uh, the offset is how many bytes from the beginning of the file from the data file are tile lives. So if we calculate all the ones and zeros and then divide by eight because each byte is eight bits we'll get the offset. So offset can be thought of as how far from the start of the file. In length is how many bytes do we need to represent our tile? Uh, in this sort of fake example here, uh, we say just six bytes. Um, it's usually more than that. Um, so the that's the data file bearing in mind the offset and the length, the index file is just um, a, it's an array of, it's, it's ones and zeros too, but it's basically a sequence of numbers of the index in the offset. Um, so it allows you to say, hey, um, I, want to know where my tile is. And so with, with this information, you can say like my tiles in the top left corner, that's gonna be index zero. Where does it start in my data? Uh, and then that with that information, you can go find um, your tile in your data. Uh, and so um, I should caution and, and uh, mention that uh, in theory, JavaScript uh, isn't the best choice for MetaRaster format, um, in part because there's limitations on how large uh, numbers can get and how large it can represent numbers. Um, but in practice, I haven't actually run into this problem before. Um, if your data set becomes super huge, uh, usually before that happens, uh, the meta raster format file will actually be broken up into a couple different meta raster format files. So you usually don't run into this limitation, but I, I should caution people with it. Um, and so uh, I will do a little code example here. Um, were there, I'll just pause right now and ask you, are there any questions? Yeah, we don't have questions yet. Okay, thank you. I think people are waiting to see more. So um, you, you create uh, a meta raster format object um and you have to pass in a url to the mrf file a url to the index file and a url to the data file then once you have that it'll expose um, some of the meta information uh, and so then i can in in this meta information is uh we go back, that is, sorry. 
that's this information. So that's that's how you'd access it, uh, the dot meta. Um, and then I'm going to uh, open up a JavaScript debug terminal, and that will allow us uh, to um, inspect these values as uh, we create our meta raster format object. So we'll call, um, oh. oh, wow. Sorry, I forgot to, uh, to run a command here to start the server. Oh, wow. Hmm. Well, I'm sorry about this. I don't, it seems like suddenly there's some issue with NPM package. I guess they made an update. Um, wow. Okay. Um, well, this is a humbling experience. It's good for everyone uh, to see this. So, uh, sorry about that. Um, I, I'm going to try to fix this. I'm not sure. I was saying that uh, the code was readable. We we didn't see the it running, but but it was readable enough. Uh, and thank you. you. I think it's an continue issue. Continue with... just yeah. I think it's an issue with VS Code though, um, and not not this library because I, I just ran it in the terminal and it worked. Um, let me see. Um, let's. I guess let's do this. Yeah, um, I don't know. There's some sort of issue with the running of the VS Code, but uh, I'll uh, out output uh, this meta here. People can see. So you can see this is the meta format uh, information that's outputted by the meta object. Uh, and then um, you can call get values uh, and get values uh, grabs the pixel values. Um, Daniel, uh, we are missing your screen. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, where is it? Okay. Um, so... I logged the meta um, thing and uh, the meta object is the one we described earlier, includes a lot of information. Uh, you also want to call get values to actually pull out the pixel values. Uh, and you're presented with a couple different options for method. Method is like the resampling method. And uh, this maps to the GeoWarp library uh, and the methods that are available there. Um, for your resampling. Uh, it will resample um, your data 
uh, into the the area that that you that you want to pull out the values for, um, and uh, you can um, pass in um, like a, a a bounding box essentially uh, of the the location, uh, and also uh, specify how uh, big you want your pixels to be, all right, how big you want your your image to be um, in the width. Uh, and it will do all that resampling to give you an image. Um, uh, layout is also, um, how do you want your data structured? Do you want it band by row by column? Or do you want it more interleaved? Um, how do you want to interleave your data? Uh, that's all available in this layout parameter. Um, and then that you can configure uh, using uh, XDIM layout syntax. Uh, and, um, yeah, uh, that, that's, um, yeah, I guess that's, that's it. Um, <laughs> happy to, to answer any questions. Thank you very much, Daniel. Oh, I was, um, writing my own question about the ability to create MR files with your library or just uh, are able to open existing ones? Oh, that, that's, that's a very good uh, question. Happy to, to answer any questions. Um, but uh, no, no, it doesn't um, do, do any of that right now. It, unfortunately, it's just reading at this time, but, but it's p potential um, for the future. Okay, and uh, another question. I saw a presentation about COG files, cloud optimization GOT files. Is, is it um, related? It's, it's how do you compare this this metadata with the COG uh, COG files? Yes, um, they're similar. Uh, the metadata uh, is uh, is very similar. They they use the same sort of uh, tiling um, ideas. Uh, and so I, I think this sort of the transition from cloud optimized geotiffs to meta raster format, which is, is cloud optimized as well as, um, is, uh, is, ra is rather simple. I think in, um, in cloud optimized geotiffs, I'm not sure I'm asking anymore anyway. Uh, they, they will refer to, um, the size of tiles as block sizes, uh, whereas here, um, they're calling it page size. So uh, there's the vocabulary is a little bit different. Um, they both use overview and, um, in, uh, in, uh, geotiffs, they, uh, don't use bounding box, um, but instead uh, you'll see them use uh, origin and uh, it, model pixel scale tag. So that, so with that information, it's really saying like, where's the top left pixel, and then uh, top left corner of your data, and then how big is each pixel. Whereas in, in our case, um, in this meta, it's not saying how big the pixels are. It's kind of giving you the bounding box and then you have to, from that information, reverse engineer and calculate how many pixels, uh, or you know how many pixels, but how big are the pixels so, so that they cover that bounding box area. So it, it, the, the math, um, it's the same math, but there's the data is sort of represented a little differently. Okay. Are you aware of, of uh, a user's usage of your library or you, do you have any feedback from? So I should mention it's in beta. Um, no one's using it yet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I uh, created it um, as a part of um, sort of a, a challenge. Uh, and uh, so it, it was created for that reason. 
Um, and it was a, um, yeah, so it, it, it doesn't have any adoption yet. I'm honestly, I'm not really sure on the use case, but, uh, you never know. And, um, it, it definitely has some advantages, um, it, as well as some drawbacks in that things are broken into three files, which makes th makes things more complicated. Um, but it is very fast. Um, and so you, you can see that, um, perhaps, um, people might have use of it in the future. Um, the, the sort of the, the biggest limitation right now with the meta raster format being used in JavaScript, uh, is that, uh, a lot of the, the MRF data isn't, um, publicly available, or if it is publicly available, it's behind an AWS authentication layer. And so you can't just kind of grab it the same way you would a lot of the public uh, um, cloud optimized geotiff spatiotemporal asset catalogs. There's a lot more like open, freely accessible and painlessly accessible uh, geotiffs, not as much MRF, um, but you know, as time changes, um, maybe we'll see that change as well. Oh, so, thank you, so much. Thank you very much.